It's a pleasure to be back with you again. This is uh, Matt Moore from Columbia University. We're going to do some quick tips on um, amyloid-specific therapy for patients with uh, cardiac amyloidosis. Um, as a highlight, um, you should know that for AL amyloid, there are many highly effective antiplasma cell therapies, but only one, daratubumab, which is a monoclonal antibody against CD38, has been approved by the FDA specifically for AL amyloid. Uh, many of the therapies that we utilize for AL amyloid are borrowed, if you will, from the myeloma space. And the role of stem cell transplant in patients with AL amyloid is evolving as more highly effective antiplasma cell therapies are being developed. For transthyridin amyloidosis, uh, pharmacological treatments include both transthyridin stabilizers and transthyridin silencers. Um, we'll talk about those briefly. Um, selection of treatment is really, um, uh, for TTR, is really dependent upon the phenotype, whether the patient has a, a cardiac predominant, a neurological phenotype, or a mixed phenotype, and um, uh, whether the disease is uh, hereditary or sporadic, i.e., does the patient have a genetic cause, the cost of um, the agents, and uh, obviously, importantly, patient preference in a process of shared decision-making. And there are a whole host of um, uh, clinical trials that are including uh, novel approaches, uh, including combination of silencing and stabilizing and um, methods to potentially degrade um, or facilitate degradation or removal of amyloid deposits from the heart uh, as the involved organ here. So um, for those treating patients with AL amyloid uh, and involving the heart, um, a multi-systemic disease we strongly urge you to uh, not to do this alone. Uh, obviously, you need a multidisciplinary team, and one of your main partners is a hematologist. Um, hematologists have developed a wealth of plasma cell therapies from uh, oral agents, including imids, um, uh, most importantly, um, uh, bortezomib and carfizomib and dinlaro agents that are uh, proteasome inhibitors. And as I mentioned, the new kit on the block is uh, daratubumab or Darlex, which we'll highlight in a minute. And there's an oral agent, uh, venetoclast, which has a high activity uh, in patients who have the T1114 translocation. Um, obviously, in certain patients, uh, uh, intermediate or high-dose uh, melphalan with stem cell transplant remains a therapeutic option. Um, the most exciting data to emerge uh, in the AL amyloidosis space recently is um, the results of the Andromeda trial. Um, this is a trial in which uh, patients with newly diagnosed AL amyloid received either um, uh, Cyborg-D, that is Cytoxan, Bortizomid, and Dexamethasone, or Cyborg-D plus Daratubumab. Again, I mentioned a monoclonal antibody that targets CD38. Um, and the most important uh, notice here was that um, a hematological complete response normalization of the light chains was much greater with the combination of Cyborg-D and Dara, with an odds ratio of five-fold higher chance of getting a CR or complete response with uh, Cyborg-D plus Dara than Cyborg-D alone. And when you lower the light chains, obviously, there was a greater effect on organ responsiveness, which is the other part of the equation, including improvements uh, and normalization of biomarkers with regard to cardiac, renal, and liver involvement. For transthyridin cardiac amyloidosis, we know um, the biology. Transthyridin is produced by the liver as a tetramer that dissociates into monomers or oligomers, and these deposit in the heart of the nerves, causing the phenotype. And the emerging strategies, again, are TTR silencing or knockdown using antisense or small interfering RNA, maybe even in the future CRISPR-based therapy. There's TTR stabilizers, of which Defaminus is the only FDA-approved agent, though uh, Diflunisil can be used off-label, and AG10 is in development. And then, as I mentioned, uh, anti-amyloid therapies that are targeting amyloid removal or extraction, which um, uh, some of which, unfortunately, have not been successful in early phase clinical trials. So for those of us caring for patients with a cardiomyopathy without a significant neuropathy, the uh, clinically available options include Tefaminus and Diflunisol. Um, Tefaminus, as you know, is approved. There was convincing phase three data that the cost could limit access. And Diflunisol is a non-steroidal that has TTR stabilizing properties. As an NSAID, it needs to be used cautiously in patients with uh, cardiac amyloidosis, uh, but can be utilized in patients without a recent decompensation with good renal function who are ideally not on anticoagulants and not on high-dose diuretics. Um, the ATTR-ACT trial um, showed that Defaminus was quite effective at reducing all-cause mortality in hospitalizations with a, a number needed to treat of about seven and a half patients over two and a half years to prevent one death. Uh, 
and about four patients over one year to prevent one hospitalization. Um, additionally, tefaminus was associated with a amelioration of the decline in six-minute hall walk or functional capacity and a slowing of the decline in the uh, quality of life of individuals or the KCCQ. Uh, as we noted in the original trial, across 11 pre-specified endpoints, tefaminus was superior to placebo except for one, and that was the group with New York Heart Class uh, 3 heart failure who lived a little bit longer, as you can see here, but had an increased risk of cardiovascular hospitalizations. And we attribute that to the idea that patients are living a little bit longer, but with a very advanced phenotype in which small perturbations uh, in diet, uh, medicine adherence, or so forth, can lead to acute uh, decompensation, for example, in the setting of an atrial arrhythmia. So the emerging data from the ATTR ACT trial as shown here highlights that um, uh, tefaminus is better, as is all amyloid agents when administered earlier in the course of the illness. That is a uh, much greater relative risk reduction of 64% for New York or class 1 patients than 39% for class 2 and much less for class 3. So uh, try to identify your amyloid patients as early as possible um, before they have significant cardiac dysfunction. Here I highlight um, the uh, two available uh, treatment options that I mentioned. There's a tefaminus and tefaminus free salt. Tefaminus meglumine was the original agent that came as a 20 milligram pill, um, either used as 20 or 80 milligrams daily. Um, uh, um, uh, there is um, really no need for concomitant therapy or monitoring. And these drugs are now um, approved in the U.S., Japan, and uh, in Europe. Tefaminus free salt is a formulation of tefaminus that's not equivalent on a milligram to milligram basis. You only need 61 milligrams of tefaminus free salt to equal the uh, blood levels of 80 milligrams of tefaminus meglumine, um, and it's a, a much easier to take once daily medicine. Diflunisol, um, when administered for TTR stabilization, is a dose of 250 milligrams twice daily. And because it's an NSAID, you need to be cautious about complications of bleeding, hypertension, fluid retention, or renal dysfunction. Um, and usually we use a concomitant proton pump inhibitor. There's a huge cost differential, obviously, between tefaminus and diflunosil, which could factor into a, a therapeutic choice. Uh, the hypothesis underlying the small interfering RNAs or the anti-sense drugs that silence TTR are shown here. And as you can see, um, you know, uh, by reducing uh, the production of the mutant protein, we can uh, reduce the unstable circulating tetramers, prevent deposits in the organ, maybe even stabilize or potentially recover uh, the organs. And as shown here in this particular slide, um, uh, um, uh, the tisseran, at least one small interfering RNA, had significant effects on um, a regional strain, um, as shown in this paper from uh, JAMA Cardiology. Uh, in the uh, silencer realm, the uh, clinically available options are patisseran um, or anatercin. They're both silencers. One is delivered IV, one sub Q. The doses are noted here. All of these um, need to have concomitant vitamin A supplementation because you're lowering the protein that carries vitamin A. And so without it, patients can develop complications of vitamin A deficiency. Um, patisseran, because it's IV and a lipid nanoparticle, has to have uh, IV. Uh, uh, medicines administered, steroids, H2 blockers, H1 blockers to prevent an allergic reaction. Um, uh, Inotercin is sub-Q, but is associated with significant, uh, or at least the risk of complications related to thrombocytopenia and a renal dysfunction. And as a result, by the FDA requires a REMS, or monitoring procedure, in which platelet counts and renal function are measured continuously. And both agents are uh, quite pricey. Um, uh, we're not stopping there in that we've used um, the silencers currently for patients who have hereditary disease with a neuropathy. They must have those two features. They could have a cardiomyopathy as well, but the question remains, um, how will patients with a predominant cardiomyopathy without a neuropathy fare with silencers? And there are three ongoing large uh, phase three clinical trials, Apollo B studying Patisseran, Cardiotransform studying the Axia Ionis compound, and Helios B studying Patisseran. Um, and as well, there's a, a phase three clinical trial, Attribute CM, that's evaluating a new stabilizer similar to Tefaminus called AG10. Um, so in summary, especially for transthyroid and amyloid, I would uh, point out that in a relatively short period of time, about a decade, 
We have transitioned from what we all thought was a rare disease, a zebra, so to speak, to one that cardiologists are encountering all the time in clinical practice um, and recognizing um, with much greater ease. And that is because we've been able to make the diagnosis in a majority of patients no longer with a biopsy, but with a non-invasive, non-biopsy approach to leveraging scintigraphy. I remind you that scintigraphy must be performed in combination with the assessment of monoclonal proteins to rule out AL amyloid. You shouldn't order a PYP scan without assessing for monoclonal proteins. And again, it's essential uh, when leveraging scintigraphy to not only use planar imaging, but to use spec imaging. But the biggest driver of the um, uh, you know, uh, development of recognition of this disease has been the emergence of effective therapies. And I think all clinicians are going to be in an enviable position, um, along with their patients, about choosing among emerging um, and effective therapies um, in the near future. Thanks again for your time.